Dear Aunt Lucy, I've discovered the most wonderful hobby in the world. Gardening. I wanted to send you some of my homegrown vegetables, but Mrs. Bird said it would be better to send you photographs instead. That's all very well, Paddington, but I refuse to pay more for your vegetables than they charge at the market. Especially as I paid for the seeds. Vegetables sold to Mrs. Bird. I'll grant you one thing. That bear may drive a hard bargain, but green paws are better than idle ones. It's weeks since we had an upset. I've just been reading about a local best garden competition. Perhaps Paddington ought to go in for it. There are lots of valuable prizes to be won. Valuable prizes? Valuable prizes? Mm -hmm. The day of the best garden competition arrived, and I was ready. Which is more than you could say for Mr. Curry, who was planning to do some last-minute improvements. Ah, there. Come here a moment, will you? Are you any good at climbing trees? Oh, yes. Bears are very good at climbing things, Mr. Curry. Good. In that case, perhaps you'd like to pick a few apples for me. If you do a good job, I may let you keep some. Um, thank you, Mr. Curry, but... Good. And while you're at it, there's a dangerous branch that needs cutting down. Now, be sure to tie one of this rope to the branch to put over the other branch and tie the other end to something heavy on the ground. And after that, you may mow my grass. Mrs. Bird says that Mr. Curry is trying to get something for nothing, so I'm sure she would have plenty to say about all of this. Mr. Curry said to tie it to something heavy. Ow! Aha! As you know, Aunt Lucy, I could write a book about the many uses of marmalade. Apart from eating it, of course. There's sticking things together, greasing rusty old sores. All that was left, then, was to mow the lawn. But there was just one problem. Paddington's very quiet this morning. He was speaking to Mr. Curry earlier. If you ask me, there's something going on. I know the signs. It's too quiet. Oh, no. Come back! Do you hear that odd motor noise coming from Mr. Curry's garden? I recognize that hat. He's going to have a fine time explaining his way out of this one. Paddington or Mr. Curry? I'm not sure which yet. Oh no! Run! These geraniums are among the finest in the entire competition. But I'm afraid these begonias are not up to par at all. Did you see that? What a novel idea. Extraordinary. A mobile garden. Come on, let's have a closer look. Good afternoon. Hey, you. Stop. <laughs> Leave this to me, sir. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm just fine, thank you. Which is more than can be said for this poor plant. Is this your lawnmower? Oh no, it belongs to my neighbour, Mr. Curry. This old machine probably hasn't been serviced in years. It's a menace to society. Mr. Curry asked me to mow his lawn. But I'd no idea it was going to go so fast. Are you employed by this Mr. Curry? Well, he gives me lots of jobs to do, but he doesn't actually pay me, except for the odd apple. I think it's time we paid your Mr. Curry a visit. Oh, he's not my Mr. Curry. I don't think he belongs to anyone. 
How could one bear make such a colossal mess in so short a time? Mr. Curry! I think you've a few questions to answer concerning the possession of a dangerous power tool, plus certain offences relating to the non-payment of wages to a young employee. Why, you bear? Tell me, are you the creator of that extraordinary mobile garden we saw earlier? Marvellous idea. Don't know why it hasn't been done before. Very prize-worthy. Prize-worthy, eh? Why, thank you so much. I felt the creative desire to express something special with my garden. Indeed. Highly commendable. If you like that, just wait until you see Paddington's patch. <clears throat> Seductively enchanting. Rapturously Elysian. Delicately voluptuous. Mr. Brown, Mr. Curry, we have prizes for each of you. Paddington Brown, I hereby present you with the grand prize for best garden in the borough. Congratulations. What about my garden? What about my prize? You, Mr. Curry, receive the prize for the best new idea in gardening. Our congratulations to both of you. Mrs. Bird couldn't believe that Mr. Curry and I made such a good team. Sometimes it's almost as though we're growing on each other. The Saturn rocket, the first rocket ship to carry a man to the moon. They're pretty impressive, huh, Gruber, old buddy? Was I right or was I right? Right as always. Visiting the Kennedy Space Center will certainly make a worthwhile chapter in my book, The World and Its Wonders, Buzz. Uh, that's Professor Buzz Booster. I'm a top NASA scientist nowadays. Jonathan and Judy had rockets on fireworks night, but nothing like this. I can't find the paper fuse anywhere. That's because it's a very different kind of rocket, Mr. Brown. You gotta stand way back when one of these babies blasts into orbit. Yahoo! If you're through admiring the rocket garden, there's lots more I want to show you before launch time. Did someone say lunch time? Professor Booster is referring to the space shuttle blast off later today, Mr. Brown. Yahoo! That's something to see! I hope the space shuttle makes less noise than Professor Booster. I'm afraid that comes from shouting over rocket engines for so many years. I was surprised to learn astronauts go to school before they blast off. This G-Force machine simulates takeoff. Hold on to your hats. It was far better than any of the rides at the fun fair. Most exhilarating. I always dreamt of becoming an astronaut, but I never had a skill in mathematics. I imagine astronauts must be very clever. Indeed they are, Mr. Brown. After all, it is rocket science. <laughs> but I bet you never figured rocket science was so much fun. Remind me to book you some driving lessons when we get home, Mr. Brown. Good idea, Mr. Gruber. Oh! What do you think, Mr. Brown? Do you fancy a trip in outer space? Outer space? <laughs> Imagine a bear in space. Yahoo! That's a good one. <laughs> I think bears would be very good in space. I had a feeling this next stop on the tour would be of particular interest to you, Mr. Brown. How will the space shuttle ever take off after they've eaten so much food? The astronauts need a good breakfast. It's their last solid meal until the end of the mission. They eat special paste in space. No marmalade. Who needs a sticky mess? Well, we've got the best that modern technology can offer. Give it a try. It tastes like a cheeseburger. I wonder how they managed to get it through the nozzle, Mr. Gruber. 
The development of space technology has led to many innovations here on Earth. I wonder what flavor this one is. Ugh, toothpaste. This is Mission Control, the nerve center of the operation. If anything happens, we're the first to hear about it. It looks like you are prepared for every eventuality. Mm, we pretty much cover all the bases. Uh, we don't like surprises in the space business. What? An astronaut slipped on a what? A cotton-picking tube of toothpaste? How the oh. heck did that happen? We'll have to send up a stand-in. I hope this doesn't delay liftoff. Make way! Oh, I think I'm in trouble again. Hey, whoa! Mr. Gruber, Professor Booster. Ah, there you are. We must have changed the height requirements for astronauts. Suit up. Everyone is waiting for you over at the launch area. The countdown has begun. Mr. Brown does have a habit of wandering off. We can't have a bear running loose around NASA. What if there's a situation? We'll find him. He can't have gone very far. Hmm. Kind of strange sending a bear up on such short notice. Professor Booster must have changed his mind about bears in space. It's always exciting watching the space shuttle blast off. Huh. Trust Paddington to get to watch it all from close up. Here comes the shuttle crew. Some of the finest men, women, and bears. <gasps> it's Paddington! What's that bear up to now? He gets into enough trouble as it is without being sent into space to do it. Call NASA right away! Good to have you on board, son. Once we're in orbit, you'll be responsible for monitoring all botanical experiments. Oh. Especially, how oranges grow in zero gravity. I happen to be quite an expert on oranges, but I never imagined marmalade with space-age chunks. There appears to be a problem with the radio, Commander. There's no way we can lift off without communications. We've got to warn Mission Control. But how? Without a radio! Okay, people. Best guess scenarios on how to re-establish contact. And make it snappy, the clock's ticking. We've got to stick that radio back in place. Stick. That'll take too long. Take a miracle to fix the radio in time. Space shuttle, come in, space shuttle. It's for you. It's lucky you always keep a marmalade sandwich under your hat in case of emergencies, Mr. Brown. Thanks to you. The mission got off on time. I'm going to see to it that every space shuttle from now on is equipped with a jar of marmalade. <laughs> There's so much you can do with it. I imagine you're a little disappointed you didn't make it into space, Mr. Brown. Not really, Mr. Gruber. Although it would have been interesting to see what would have happened to my marmalade chunks in zero gravity. Dear Aunt Lucy, you can't imagine the surprise I had yesterday morning. Paddington? Yes, Mrs. Bird? Be careful of the snow. Oh, it's cold. Oh, my goodness. Everything's turned white outside. Look! <laughs> it's all right, Paddington. It's only snow. It's sort of like frozen rain, only very soft, like melted ice cream. It doesn't taste like ice cream. I can't remember this much snow since I was a girl. I so enjoyed making snowmen. Snow, snow, beautiful snow. Wonderful, magical, beautiful snow. When days get short, the wind begins to blow. Soon we'll see the first beautiful snow. Millions of flakes float down into view. And blanket the world to make it fresh and new. You need to dress up warm to play in the snow. Coat, boots, mitts, hat, and scarf, you're ready to go. Snow, snow, beautiful snow. Wonderful, magical, beautiful snow. Snow is fun for everyone, so enjoy it while you can. Roll it, mold it, pack it, stack it. Let's make a snowman. It's so much fun. Shout hooray. Wish it would snow each and every day. Snow.
snow, snow, beautiful snow, wonderful, magical, beautiful snow. If you've never seen it, you just don't know. Wonderful, magical, beautiful snow. <laughs> Anyone for a snowball fight? Snowball fight? You missed. Oh. I didn't that time. <laughs> <laughs> That bear. I'll give him a piece of my mind for waking me up. Hey! You can't get me, Paddington! <laughs> Whoop! Ah! Bear! Mr. Curry, run, Paddington! Bear! Good morning, Mr. Curry. Would you like a game of snowballs, too? <laughs> No, I will not, Bear. Your snowball hit me on the nose. I'm very sorry, Mr. Curry. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> Clear your path, Mr. Curry. If you do a job, there might just be ten pence in it for you. Lucy, but I got there in the end. Phew. Why haven't you started yet, Bear? Get to work, or I'll have to report you for throwing snowballs. Oh. Oh. Mr. Curry must have caught Paddington before he could get away. We'll soon see about that. Paddington, time for lunch. Coming, Mrs. Bird. Just as soon as I finish clearing Mr. Curry's snow. It's always good to have a little something under your hat for emergencies. Ah, just what's needed to make a good job of things. Bear? Has that bear got to? Bear! Where has Mr. Curry got to? Bear! Here I am, Mr. Curry! Mr. Curry! Bear! I had never pictured Mr. Curry playing hide and seek. Bear! Who shut my back door? but it was certainly my turn to hide. Who locked me out of my house? Bear! Where has that bear got to? Aha! We better help him. It was freezing under all that snow. Paddington! <laughs> How dare you lock me out of my house? One thing's certain, there'll be no ten pence for you. We'll help you get back inside, Mr. Curry. The cold shoot's the only way in, Paddington. We've tried everything else. D -d Down you go, Bear. <laughs> Remember that t -t 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 ten pence? Do you think I'll fit, Mr. Curry? You, 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 you'll f f f f f f fit, all right. H hurry! Good luck, Paddington. Whoa! My, 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 how you go? I, I keep a lot, a lot, a lot of v v v valuable antiques down over there. It's very dark. Mother's favorite lamp! Out! Out of my house this instant! And no, 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 no,
I'm sorry, Mr. Curry. No! <laughs> Mrs. Bird is always telling me to make sure I close the door whenever I go out. But I don't think even she would have expected me to do it that day. Mr. Curry certainly didn't. <laughs> I do wish Mr. Curry would hurry up and finish all his home improvements. I wouldn't mind if they were his ideas in the first place. But now he's even talking of putting a serving hat in his kitchen wall, just like the one Mr. Brown installed. He said he'd do that right after he copies the concrete path Mr. Brown put in our garden. Oh, indeed. If Mr. Curry's not simply being mean, he's busy copying everyone else's ideas. Are you sure you won't come with us, Paddington? No, thank you, Mrs. Brown. I think I'll stay at home and sit in the garden. Oh, I don't think you'll get much peace. Not while Mr. Curry's busy trying to copy all of Henry's improvements. It had indeed been a very busy week for Mr. Brown. The serving hatch he installed made life easier for everyone, not just Mrs. Bird. And the kitchen sparkled with a fresh coat of paint. It was when Mr. Brown laid the new concrete path in the garden that Mr. Curry got wind of it all. Mrs. Bird says that Mr. Curry's never had an original idea in his life. I'll never finish these renovations. Unless... Morning, Bear. Huh? 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 Oh, good morning, Mr. Curry. I wonder if you'd care to lend a paw, Bear. I'm laying down some stakes, and it's a bit difficult with only one pair of hands. This way. Mrs. Bird is right, Mr. Curry. You do want your house to look like ours. What? Uh, well, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'll show you where you can put the stakes, and you can carry on while I go out for more supplies. And if you finish before I get back, you can collect some rubble for the path's foundation. If you do a good job, there might be ten pence in it for you. Thank you, Mr. Curry, but... Good. Now, when I nod my head, you hit it. <laughs> Come back here, Bear! I couldn't believe my ears when Mr. Curry told me to hit his head, but over the years I've learned never to question him. There's always a first time. Now I shall have to stop at the doctor's before buying my supplies. While I hadn't agreed to lend a paw with the stakes or collect rubble, I did feel badly about hitting Mr. Curry and I wanted to make it up to him. But since he hadn't shown me where to put the stakes, I'd have to find another way to help him. And I did. Oh! oh. <gasps> I found that knocking down walls was much more interesting than what Mr. Curry had planned for me. Even with all the dust. I had finished one of the best jobs I could ever remember doing, and I was sure Mr. Curry would be just as pleased. Oh dear, I think I'm in trouble again. I'd seen the Browns' house from a great many different angles, but never from that direction. Uh-oh. What are you up to now? What am I up to now, Mr. Curry? Ah, I see you're trying to make amends. And you've done very well. This is excellent rubble. Here, I promised you ten pence, and I must say you've earned it. Thank you very much, Mr. Curry. 
but I won't spend it yet in case you want it back. Nonsense! Of course I shan't want it back! This rubble's just what I need for my path. I don't think you should use it for your path, Mr. Curry. You may want it for something else. Something else? Whatever are you on about? Give me an example. If it's all the same to you, Mr. Curry, I'd rather not. Well, back to work then. <laughs> there. That will come up again in a hurry once it's set. Bear? Where have you got to, Bear? Yoo-hoo! Bear! <gasps> I just saw a bear running that way. He'll be doing more than running when I catch him. Don't worry, mate. I'll just leave your milk in this delivery hatch. Won't even have to bother you from now on. Delivery hatch? It's a terrific idea, you know. I'm sure the grocery boy and anyone else who has to make deliveries will agree. <laughs> It'll make life so much easier. And if you build a cupboard inside, you won't even have to answer the door. No. I wouldn't, would I? Ah, there you are, Bear. Come here at once. I'm sorry about the serving hatch, Mr. Curry. You see, I picked the wrong wall by mistake. Your house is the same as the Browns, except everything's the other way round. Don't worry, Bear. It's a splendid idea. Very practical indeed. Don't know why I didn't think of it ages ago. And you know what the best part of it is, Bear? It was free, Mr. Curry? <laughs> Not only that, Bear. What's best of all is that no other house on the street has one. Ah, maybe I'll surprise Mr. Brown with one as well. People come from all over the world to photograph and study the animals of the Galapagos Islands. That is why I'm afraid you only have one day to carry out your research, Mr. Grover. That should be plenty of time, Mr. Sanchez. I'm sure I'll be able to get all the photographs I need for my book, The World and Its Wonders. And it is because of this young bear that you have been given permission. After all, he is from Peru. And because Peru and Ecuador are right next to each other, we're neighbors, Mr. Sanchez. Exactly. So, we will meet back here at the end of the day. Good luck! Isn't this exciting, Mr. Brown? The Galapagos Islands, where evolution happens before your very eyes. Look, Mr. Brown! Oh, wait! I hope evolution slows down a bit while we're here, Mr. Gruber. Otherwise, you won't get any good pictures. The blue-footed booby! Steady, Mr. Brown, don't startle it! I'm sorry, Mr. Groover, but you didn't say anything about it startling me. Don't worry, Mr. Brown, but we shall have to work out a plan if we are to get the photographs we need. You go that way, and I'll go this way. We'll circle towards each other and corner the bird. Bears are good at going round in circles, Mr. Groover. Quietly, Frank. Do not frighten them away. Harry Fritz, or the shot will be ruined? Ah! We've waited hours for the sun to be perfectly positioned and you ruined the shot! Me, Fritz! You are the one who wasn't fast enough! One whole month and still we have nothing interesting for our documentary film, The Galapagos Islands. We must find something soon, or our reputations will be ruined. Aha! But where's Mr. Gruber? Perhaps I can see him from up there. But I'll need to use my claws. What's that? Amazing! Red feet! Are you filming? Of course. Do you see that? Red feet, blue body, red crest. 
What kind of creature is this? I have never seen anything like it. You had better not ruin this shot, Fritz. Mr. Gruber! Ah! Ah! Mr. Gruber! It is. It is on the move. We must get closer. But first, we need camouflage. I certainly have a helpful assistant. His cries sent the bird right to me. Oh, oh, sorry, Mr. Gruber. Oh. oh, Mr. Gruber, I've ruined another picture. That's quite all right, Mr. Brown. We'll just have to try again. Whatever happened to your Wellingtons? Oh, I left them back there. Perhaps you should fetch them while I track the bird. I love this part of our job. I shall be picking leaves out of my hair for weeks. You must be perfectly quiet, friend. I must be quiet. Shh, that sounds like something very large. I hope it isn't something that's looking for lunch. must have spotted us. It is trying to get away. Hurry! It's chasing me. There! This creature is behaving strangely. Almost as if it knows it is being followed. My hat! Something sprung a leak. There. I must be sure to tell Mr. Sanchez about this. Now is the time to get a close-up. We must be very careful. Who knows what we're dealing with? I wonder if this creature has a defense mechanism. It could be dangerous. It... it throws rocks! Ah, Mr. Brown, I'm afraid to say that I've lost the bird. Well, there's lots more we can take pictures of, Mr. Gruber. It's the blue-footed booby again. I think it's after your marmalade sandwich. Aunt Lucy always told me to share. Good work, Mr. Brown. Hurry up, Mr. Gruber. It's about to begin. What a stroke of luck, Mr. Brown, to be able to watch a nature documentary on the Galapagos Islands so soon after our trip there. I'm sure it'll be very helpful for your book, Mr. Gruber. We have made a truly wonderful discovery. A new species never before seen on the Galapagos Islands. Isn't that right, Mr. Sanchez? Hmm. The experts have examined this footage quite carefully and all agree that this is an undocumented species. But... That looks like my coat, and my Wellingtons, and my hat. But the greatest mystery is that this rare species seems to have disappeared without a trace. Well, we know where that rare species is, don't we, Mr. Brown? And if you had your camera, Mr. Gruber, you could take a picture of it. My favorite part of the day is sharing my buns with Mr. Gruber. I always learn a lot from our chats together. Good morning, Mr. Gruber. Mr. Gruber? That's funny. Mr. Gruber never misses our elevenses. I do hope he's all right. Not a sign of him. And no clues. And second thoughts. <coughs> Mr. Gruber, are you all right? Mr. Brown, is that you? Ah, good morning, Mr. Brown. I see you've spotted my latest acquisition. It's an old croc. <laughs> That's the name given to vintage cars. This one is so old, it runs on steam. You mean you have to boil a kettle to make it go? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Brown. What I mean is that it's a steam-powered automobile. It was built 
in the days before they invented the engines we use today. But I'm afraid it's a little worse for wear at the moment. I wonder if you wouldn't mind helping me to restore it, Mr. Brown. Restore it? Oh, yes, please, Mr. Gruber. Soon, there will be the International Fair in the Portobello Road. And I hope to enter it in the Grand Parade, if it's ready in time. I've had plenty of practice at cleaning things up, Mr. Gruber. I'm sure we'll be able to turn this old crock into a new one, in no time at all. And after a lot of hard work, that's just what we did. But I also managed to get very, very dirty. It was time to use a secret weapon. Magic bubbles contain special ingredients. With just one capful, magical results are guaranteed. Magical results? That's just what I need. If one capful does all they say, think what two might do. After all, tomorrow is a very special day. Here you are, Paddington. I think I've removed all the stains. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bird. You look so clean and shiny. And so slippery. <laughs> it almost seems a pity to cover you up. It's the magic bubbles, Mrs. Bird. <laughs> Two-ton muscles galore. The strongest man in the world. He sounds very interesting. Ah, Mr. Brown, I have to go and register the car. Why don't you have a look around the fair? Where shall I start, Mr. Gruber? <laughs> Why, just follow your nose, Mr. Brown. Ah, I see you've seen the bony prize. <laughs> prize? For toss in the caber. Take a look over there. Oh! Are you up to it, laddie? I might have a go. You, hand the gable to this young gentleman here. You're kidding me, right? He'd never be able to hold it up. I'll have you know that bears are very good at holding things. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Brown! I'm gonna... Come on now, muscles. It's time for your show. Oh dear, Mr. Brown. This has put a damper on our entering the Grand Parade. Perhaps we could try parading it on three wheels. It's possible, I suppose, Mr. Brown. But someone would have to hold the other corner. Someone with a lot of strength. I shan't be a moment, Mr. Gruber. And in this corner, I give you the strongest man in the world, the one, the only, two-ton muscles galore! And our challenger, ladies and gentlemen, is... Who are you, Champ? My name isn't Champ, it's Paddington Brown, and I'm from Darkest Peru. And in this corner, all the way from Darkest Peru, Paddington Brown! Now ain't this just a funny turn of events? It's him again. I'm going to enjoy this. Mr. Galore, I was... Oh. 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 Yeah. He's all slippery. No. Mr. Galore, I just wanted to... Oh. He's coated himself with something. I can't get an old. He's all slippery, worse than an eel. Did you hear that? Come over here, you! No, thank you, Mr. Galore. Well, I never, in all my years. Muscles galore, indeed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mrs. Bird, I only wanted to ask Mr. Galore if he'd help with Mr. Gruber's car. Any 
anything. I'll do anything you want. Just get at a stop, will ya? I must thank you, Mr. Brown. I've almost given up hope of entering the Grand Parade. You're welcome, Mr. Gruber. But Mrs. Bird helped a bit too. You're looking very full of beans, Paddington. Anyone would think you had a bus to catch. Actually, I'm looking forward to a nice hot bath, Mrs. Bird. Goodness gracious. Wonders will never cease. My whiskers are a bit dusty, so I may need some more magic bubbles. They were so successful today, who knows what results they could bring tomorrow. Just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear He's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear 